Okay, I think we're going. Let me see. Hi, thank you for joining us for our 2021 Spring Mineral Meeting. My name is Sydney Patterson. I am the Assistant Manager at our Farmers Cooperative, our Van Buren location. I am also a 2021 Retail Performance Specialist through Purina. And I am joined here tonight with Ms. Christy Keeler. Hi folks, it's such a pleasure to be here tonight. Sydney, I'm telling you, we've got a couple of great speakers here tonight. I oh, sure do. You guys got some awesome, offer, uh, awesome opportunities going on there at the store, right? Yes, ma'am. So we got some spring mineral promos going on there at the store that'll end, when's that? In April. Absolutely. So folks, we've got Dr. N.T. Cosby here tonight. He is our Purina cattle nutritionist. So uh, it's been a pleasure to be working with him almost for two years now. And uh, let him introduce himself, tell a little bit about his background and kind of what all he does for us at Purina. And then over here on the other side, we've got Mr. Brian Hutt. He's Central Life Science and he works with Purina, brings us our fly control. So the outs said that we put in our mineral and then the clear fly that we put into some of our show feed as well as our new Equitug with the Clara Fly. So gentlemen, we're gonna let you guys talk a little bit about yourself and introduce yourself if you don't mind. Good evening, N.T. Cosby is my name. I'm from Mexico, Missouri. Uh, I have been with uh, Karina 25 years now, uh, doing a role of technical services and, and cattle consultant, working with our Dealers and salespeople and their customers in Arkansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, and, and Eastern Kansas. So, um, looking forward to addressing some of your commonly asked mineral questions. We might have those. Uh, we're hoping that you'll uh, chat those into the uh, question box on Facebook Live or if you're on Zoom using that chat function and, and sending your questions in so we can address your questions. If you want this to be your meeting. Brian, I'll uh, turn it over to you. Thank you, Dr. N.T. My name is Brian Huff. I'm with Central Life Sciences. I live in uh, Raymore, Missouri, and uh, I've been with Central Life Sciences going on 11 years now. Um, 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 Christy mentioned earlier about the said. She mentioned as well. So, uh, like Dr. NT said, um, please put any burning fly control questions that you may have that you've thought about or always wondered about, any kind of myths that you want uh, uh, solved or answered, I guess, when it comes to fly control, please put those in there and we'll try to answer them tonight as well. Great, Brian. Uh, one uh, question I often get on, on mineral is, is why, why feed a, a complete bag mineral. I mean, I could throw out a, a trace mineral. I guess and he is, uh, those trace mineralized salt blocks, regardless of what color they are, whether they're brown or uh, some other color, uh, they're mostly salt uh, and they have very, very little trace mineral actually included in those trace mineralized salt blocks. So uh, a cow would have some amount of those to get them to trace minerals. So when you buy a Purina Wind and Rain mineral, you're, you're getting not only the trace mineral package, but also a significant portion of the, of the macro minerals as well. And so calcium, uh, phosphorus, magnesium, which is uh, important for us right now, which uh, is something we'll probably talk about in a little bit in terms of grass technique. But uh, we're trying to get a complete package in, uh, in essentially four ounces of mineral, so a quarter of a pound of mineral. So, uh, all of those essential nutrients and, and mineral really is the cornerstone of a good quality mineral nutrition program. So it, uh, it, it, it is delivering significantly more than, uh, than just the trace minerals. Um, Ryan, the other thing we can do with our, with our mineral program, which is something we'll probably talk about a little bit, and as an effective delivery system for, uh, for a lot of our out, uh, additive so that's uh, that's where you come in with our opposite for fly control absolutely I, i'll tell you what i always tell people um mineral really is the you you are guaranteed for my product not to work if cows don't eat that mineral and so as you know in the mineral game there's a lot of tag dressing games that are played with mineral and i always like to tell people not all 
Brian, the other thing. Um, and Brandon does a great job. Dental program. They have a product that. And um, so there, there's there's a science that goes about getting getting these cows to eat it, and not just eat it. We're just going to make people mad because they eat through a bunch of it if, if they're just eating it like crazy. But also getting them to eat it on, on a consistent level at the right level. And and Prima's done a good job with um, formulating the mineral to really make my product else to shine because of the, uh, the fact that we're going to get these cows to eat it, eat it on a consistent basis to where they can get the adequate fly control because that's what we're really trying to do with my product we're not trying to treat the cow we're trying to treat the manure that goes out of the rear end of that cow that's that's the basics behind how else it works when a horn fly that is taking blood meals 30 to 40 blood meals a day on a cow it's not it's not getting elsid in that blood meal and dying from it it's Oh, our, our magic happens in the manure. And so that's what we're trying to do. We're treating that manure. So when the fly lays its eggs in that manure, we're, we're stopping it there. But the beautiful thing about the Prina Winter Rain Mineral that really I'm excited about and that I always like to brag on Prina about is the fact that they put in our Altacid at a 1400 pound cow formulation. Basics behind. And NT, you can correct me, but not all companies are doing a 1400 pound mineral. No, that's right. Uh, we, we do go for a uh, bigger, bigger size cow recognizing that's where the industry is today. Plus, we also want to have a little bit of insurance those times when mineral consumption is maybe a little lower. We're still getting your product and certainly our mineral program into the cows at, at a needed, needed level. And, and that's really important because it would be easy for a company to do a thousand pound formula, which is pretty much standard or been the industry standard for a long time is just formulate things for a thousand pound cow, which means with the Purina product, you get 40% more out to sit in there for your heavier cows. So you're getting the correct dose in there. And that's really, really important. Print is doing the right thing for you as a, as a producer in your cows. So make sure you're going to get the optimal fly control that, you can, that you're uh, expecting out, out of the product. So, Brian, we've got uh, the bag fellers sitting up here. And, and obviously, uh, you want us all to go for the gold. I've heard you say that before. So Gold's better, right? Gold is better. So the gold bag is a, is a Purina mineral that con contains the alphacid. Uh, for, for fly control. So a little bit of description of our other bag colors up here. So this uh, this bag, to me, that's red. Now my wife would say it's some other shade of red or something like burgundy or whatever, but I, I'm just gonna call that the red bag. Okay, so that's our standard all season mineral bag. And then at the far right is the green, which would be our high magnet. And so we're sitting here on, on March 25th. We're in the heart of grass tetany season. So the mag mineral would be what we would recommend this time of year for uh, our spring calving cows that are on a, a cool season forage base. So for example, fescue, or if you have some ryegrass, some annuals like that, or wheat, so we'd certainly want to get that high mag into them so we can deliver that uh, magnesium. Typically we'll want to start that late February and continue on the high mag program through about uh, first part of May when we start seeing that uh, flag leaf or that uh, cool season board started going into the boot season. At that point, we can switch over to our, our more summer type all season mineral. Now here at, uh, at Farmers Cooperative, you do have the opportunity to get uh, either of those options, the high mag or the summer mineral program with the opposite fly control. So whatever uh, we can do to help fit your program, customize the mineral program for your operation, uh, we have the, the products to, uh, to help get that done. Um, Christy, uh, any uh, questions that, that yeah. have come through? Yeah, we've had one? a couple of questions that come through. So one of those questions, Brian, would be for you. You know, always heard, you know, my neighbors are not used to block and roll. So can you help me out? Is it really worthwhile for me to use that gold bag out there with my cat? Yep, good question. So. Number one question I get, and I have for 11 years now, uh, selling out to sit is, what about my neighbor? My neighbor has cows that, that he doesn't do any fly control on. Those, those horn flies are just going to come over. My cattle is a waste of time and money to do fly control, right? Well, when we're talking about horn flies, horn fly is a totally different cat from, I guess I call it a cat, but a uh, <laughs> totally different animal or insect than what your standard house fly is that you think about. Um, and the reason why is, is a horn fly is very host specific. It stays right on that cow from the time it hatches out of the manure. It's going to go find its blood meal. And the first blood meal it comes to is hopefully the cows that are right on your own property there. And those flies are going to stay on that host animal 
and they're going to take 30 to 40 blood meals a day. They're going to do that for two to three weeks. And so that's the number one reason why horn fly is very hill specific. They stay on that animal for the blood meals. Number two, that female horn fly, the only place she can breed is in, uh, is right there on that animal. If they don't, flies don't take off and go breed somewhere else, they do it right there on that animal. And then thirdly, the only place she can lay those eggs is in, in that fresh cow manure. Can't go lay it in old hay, can't go lay it uh, in the riverbank somewhere. It's got to be right there in that fresh cow manure. Can't be in horse manure even for that matter. Uh, horn flies are very specific to that to that, that cattle manure. And so those are the three reasons why you don't have to worry about what that neighbor's doing because once it gets on the cow, it's gonna stay on that cow. They're not gonna be transitional. Flies just, horn flies don't fly real far. Whereas a house fly or even maybe a face fly, if you remember if those are very similar, are gonna fly up to four miles away. Um, and so horn fly is not a strong fly. It's gonna stay right there on that end. So it's really important to not worry about what the neighbor's doing and, and take care of the horn flies in your own cows. Secondly, I would just say, get your neighbor to do horn fly control too. We'll just solve that problem. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ryan, I always think about the fact when we hear that, see that tail fly over that cow's back, knock those flies up. We all, we all know what happened, right? Those flies go up. Right back down. Right back on that same cow. They don't go to the next cow. That's right. They stay right on that same cow. So. It's great, great uh, visual for me. Well, and for in that same vein, we get the question of what about rotational grazing? If I'm moving them constantly, is that going to help me with fly control? And the answer is <laughs> those flies are going to just follow those cows wherever right. you move them, unless you're pouring them or something in the middle to knock them down. But um, those, those flies are always going to stay on the back of those cows, you're right? Hey, that rotational grazing thing brings up a, a you know a comment I might make here and thinking about is. We talked about these bags and these loose minnows of the different colors. I think, I guess, by rotational grazing, you always got to move that mineral feeder. Another option are these mineral tubs. So we also offer a mineral through a, a tub form. And so if uh, if you don't want to uh, invest in, in mineral feeders, we've all seen uh, what bulls do to mineral feeders, or we've got those low profile ones with the flap. The flap stays on there for a while, but then it gets pulled off. But uh, so if, uh, if you have a lot of pastures, if you have a lot of uh, rotational systems, one option might be the, uh, these uh, mineral tubs. So there's 225 pounds of mineral in this tub. You have to provide free choice salt, but a lot of folks like the convenience of the tubs and there's absolutely no waste to these uh, products. Uh, we're pretty proud of our wind and rain technology. It's a large particle size and the loose mineral is not gonna blow away. It resists water. So we, we like to say it, uh, it resists water, but not digestion. So the cows can still get the good quality mineral nutrition you're paying for. But uh, if you want the ultimate weather resistance, uh, these mineral tubs uh, provide that. Um, and again, you're providing uh, 225 pounds of mineral in this tub with virtually, virtually no waste. And, and I know, Brian, uh, you like these, the fly control in them, especially in, in the late summer. And uh, I'll let you address uh, why you like the mineral tubs in the late summer. Well, let's just let's just be honest. Uh, mineral management can be an issue. You know, we've all got busy lives. We, you know, keeping the mineral feeder full or even in the proper location in the pasture is not always top priority. There's a lot of things going on in all of our lives, and always a lot of different chores to be done. And and, and the mineral tub is, is the ultimate in getting making sure those cows are eating. It. And and you can move these around and, and drop them off in different places in the pasture, and you know that they're going to get consumption. And so. Late summer, you know, when things start to get kind of hot and dry and and, and, and forage fluctuates, um, you know, making sure that they're going to have a mineral that, that they want to eat and these tubs are it. Uh, and it's a great option for making sure that we carry that fly control aspect through into the fall and keeping consistent intake. Because if we just have a day or two that we don't have mineral intake, um, you know, you're, you're thinking about that female horn fly laying 500 eggs in a lifetime you think about just one female horn fly doing that you don't just have one female horn fly in the past you got hundreds of thousands of them um we're, we're going to have a mess on our hands real quick if we don't keep that manure treated so this is a great option late in the season um when, when cows kind of can, can get goofy on you on your mineral consumption but really it's just a nice thing to know that you can throw 225 pounds of mineral out there and, and not worry about it for, for several days and not worry about the weight yeah that's right so kind of feed on to that, we've got a question here tonight, is, is the initial fly population expected to be a little lower this year? Because we had that late, we were actually scheduled to be here about a month ago, right? Yeah. We had canceled because both of you guys, Missouri, 
roads weren't the greatest and we had some snow and number of hours of below freezing temperatures. Will that affect this flight population for this year? No, not really. Um, in fact, what we did last fall for fly control is going to make an impact on this spring. Because what happens in, in the fall when it gets too cold for flies to emerge, they decide, all right, we're natural instincts are we got to hibernate and they dig through the manure dirt and down into the through the manure into the dirt in the pupa stage, which is the last stage before that fly hatches out as an adult. That's the overwintering stage. Well, where does elk else that stop them? It's going into the pupa stage. So if we stop less pupas from overwintering in the dirt for next spring, we start out with less flies. So really your fly control season started last fall. But if we didn't stay on it long into the fall, we could still get ahead of it in the spring, making sure that we get started on elk sit right away before the fly population starts to build. Because it's really a numbers game. It's a percentage game. That's what we're playing. We're controlling 95% of the flies with elk sleep. So that, that you know, if you, that 5% is a small number, you're, you're going to have low fly numbers. If that 5% grows into a big population, then it, it's a little bit harder to control. So it's just a numbers game. So getting after it early in the season is really, really important. You can somewhat negate what, what happened last fall. So. Go ahead. So we got another one that was dropped in here. So, and this question is asking, you know, I sprayed quite a bit of chicken litter out and you know chicken litter is pretty high in phosphorus. Can you kind of comment, you know, what type of phosphorus level would we need to put out with our food pack? Yeah, that's a great question. One that, that I commonly get is if I if I spread litter or have a highly fertilized pasture and you know, doing so, uh, soil tests and all of those things, can I maybe back up the phosphorus level in my mineral? And that's a valid question because the most expensive part of, of a mineral is the phosphorus level. So the way I would address that is when we put out a fertilizer on a pasture, poultry litter, whatever, and, and we, we're adding that phosphorus, what we're actually doing is increasing the volume. And, and the way we're doing that is increasing the number of plants out there, actually, and the number of leaf blades. And so the way to take phosphorus off the pasture is with hay. They are oil grazing. So you think about that. Um, if we add phosphorus out there, we make more plants, we make more volume of forage. The cow, however, cannot necessarily eat more blades of grass or more forage. So she can still eat the same pounds of grass. There's more blades out there. So we're not actually not getting more phosphorus into our cow. We're maybe raising the carrying capacity of our pasture, or we're maybe increasing the volume of hay we can, we can take off that acreage, but we're not necessarily increasing the phosphorus level in each individual plant. And we need to think about that cow that can only eat so many plants. So our recommendation from a phosphorus level is this time of year with the green bag high mag mineral, we're gonna be at a 4% 4, 4 phosphorus mineral on our high mag mineral for a couple of reasons. One, the grass is obviously the highest quality it's gonna be all that all the year. So there is quite a bit of phosphorus in it at that time of year. Plus we wanna make sure cows consume them well. Magnesium is very palatable. So we drop the phosphorus, increase the magnesium because uh, that's what we need at that time. We go into our summer mineral, we're going to recommend a 7.5% phosphorus mineral. Grass quality is going to start declining at that point. The other reason is we're all about intake, as Brian mentioned, and, and want to get consistent intake. And we have found that having a salt level in the low to mid 20s and a phosphorus level in that 6 to 8% range gives us our most consistent consumption um, through the summer. And so that's why we uh, still recommend the 7.5% phosphorus mineral. We do a lot of field demos and working with our customers on, on uh, 90 days, analyzing uh, mineral consumption. And uh, with a, a significant number of cows, we're pretty confident that we can, uh, we can hit that, that level of intake with you. Because overconsumption or underconsumption, either way, is costing you. So that's why we go with the, the 7.5% phosphorus most of the year, other than when, when we we're on a high night. So, trying to feed on to that, the one question that was dropped in is how long would we feed that high night? Okay, the high mag mineral, uh, as, as Christy mentioned, uh, we're, we had scheduled to do this meeting about the time we would normally start uh, on a high mag mineral, which is about mid-February. And we're going to carry that through, uh, through early part of May. 
I want you to see that flag leaf for that uh, that cool season forage starting to get into the boot stage. Uh, we can switch over to our summer mineral. Um, oftentimes, uh, I get a question of, "Well, we want to start that mag mineral early, right? So we can so we can uh, elevate their levels or add to their stores." Not necessarily. Most cows actually have enough calcium and magnesium <coughs> held in their bones to. Uh, to a prevent tetany, the problem is that they can't mobilize it quickly. So we start magnesium mineral early in the season before we actually need it. So we're, we are ensuring that those cows are eating it consistently and getting it in, into their blood level every day. So that's why we started early and we go to uh, to about that early to mid. -day. So I had a question dropped in for you, Brian. Mm -hmm. Black control and mineral versus other forms of application. Kind of comments on kind of what you think in regards to that. Yeah, so I mean, there are a lot of products that we can use for controlling horn flies. I mean, we've all used them for years, sprays, tags, porons, um, a lot of topical applications. My company sells and manufactures a lot of those type products. Um, so I will not say that, you know, they're necessarily wrong or the wrong, uh, they're just different tools in the toolbox. Here's what I always like to tell people. If you were to go home, or like you're probably sitting at home right now if you're watching this, but say you were to walk into the kitchen, and if you're not sitting in the kitchen, go into another room that's got a sink. And that room you walk into is flooded, and there's water. And all over the floor, and you're wondering what in the world. And the first thing you think of is, I got to get a mop, some, some towels, and soak up that water. But you forget to turn the faucet off on the sink that was providing the water just running over the, over the counter onto the ground. That's kind of similar um, explanation, I guess, to a topical is being those flies are constantly coming out of the manure. We've got to stop them at the source because flies breed at such a high rate. So we've got to use a product like Galtacid to make sure that we're stopping that source and turning that faucet off to really minimize the number of flies that are that are around our cattle. Those topical products work. I just like to look at them as more of a um, a rescue type product because if you're constantly using an adult side to kill adult flies on the back of the cow, what's going to happen? You're going to build resistance to that product and then they won't have those technologies to use. So, whereas Alta said you can use it year after year and not have a resistance problem with it. Um, and when we're going right to the source of the problem, that's the manure. So, that's really the bedrock, I think, in a fly control program, especially in a pasture situation with horn flies. The great thing about Alta said, why it works so well on horn flies. The only place it can lay its eggs is in manure, so you can you can treat that that one source and, and go get after those flies. Really so, right. How do we know if your product is effective? I mean, I still see flies when, right. we're, when we're feeding the gold bag. So, how do I know it's working? That's a great question. So, um, you know, obviously, an expectation level is important to understanding. We can't rid your cows of flies. They both that's both you know pretty much physically and financially impossible um, unless you wanted to spray them every single day and spend a lot of time doing that. But um, you know we're, we're trying to without so we're trying to control horn flies at an economically feasible level as well as a labor free. You know we're all we're all busy. We got other things to do. Nobody wants to go out and spray cattle. Whereas we can use that cow to control these flies by letting them be the the fly control spreader. Um, and so. We want to keep fly numbers at less than 200 flies per head. So you're not going to have no flies, but as long as we're keeping those flies at a uh, control at a level that those those cows are able to be comfortable, um, you know, that calf's able to get a, a meal from mama, some of those type of things. If the tail's not going like a windmill, you're probably doing a pretty good job on your fly control. If they're spread out, grazing, and act overall um, pretty comfortably, you're doing a good job on your fly control. Um, but if they're huddled up and they're fighting flies and they're stomping and kicking and slinging their heads back, you're, you've got a fly control problem and it's costing you money. So you're not getting good fly control. Something needs to be checked out at that at that point. So as long as they're comfortable, that's really the name of the game. We're in the cow comfort business. So um, I know no one's going to count 200 flies, but as long as we're keeping them under that level, we're doing a good job on the fly control. Good, good point. Well, I, mean, I always think, you know, I get out there in the field and I get to visiting with folks and what's 200 flies? look like on a cow, right? And I just kind of look from point of shoulder to that hip bone. That's right, yeah. We're kind of covered up. As long as they're just on the back and not all down the sides and on the belly and, and up and down the legs, you know, you're doing a pretty good job. So the other thing I always tell people is go find a neighbor that's not doing fly control. <laughs> go look at their cows and then go, all right, my, it's working. You know, we're, we're getting better fly control. Again, it's a percentage game. We're playing a percentage game and it's a labor-free percentage game. And we're, we're trying to just uh, make these cows be as comfortable and profitable as possible. Well as possible. Uh, Christy, one of the, we talked about the uh, alpha control additive. Another additive we often get 
ask about if he, uh, he all have a, a breeder there, right? So uh, we do, and, and our mineral that we would call our, our breeder mineral would be the uh, wind and rain, all season seven and a half, available four mineral. And that available four component would be what we would uh, include as our, our breeder package. So what available four is, is uh, the available, as you might uh, suggest or expect, uh, suggest they are more bioavailable sources of trace minerals, which means more of what we feed actually gets into the cow where, where it can do some good from the mineral standpoint. Four are those four trace minerals, zinc, copper, manganese, and cobalt. And so rather than being complex to a, another metal, for example, zinc sulfate or copper chloride, which are standard trace mineral type sources, they're complex to an amino acid. So for example, zinc methionine or copper lysine. So the way that they are, the absorption is different. And so uh, we get more of that, those trace minerals into the cow and that helps us from a uh, uh, several different standpoints. There's, uh, there's research to show that we can get more cows bred and cycle earlier. They'll uh, return ester sooner, have uh, uh, have more milk production, improve health of our calves at weaning. So there are a lot of benefits to that particular pack package. If you're interested in looking at, at something like that, for example, if, uh, if you're flushing some donor cows and putting embryos in, if you're doing a lot of AI work, uh, that would be our, our mineral recommendation. The thing I would say is uh, a lot of times I, I, I get folks to say, okay, I'm going to turn my bulls in May 15th. I better get some of that breeder mineral and put out about the same time. You're too late. Okay, so if you're interested in, in a breeder type package um, and you're a spring cabin herd and so you're going to turn bulls in probably uh, sometime in May, now would be the time to, uh, to come into the farmer's cooperative store closest to you and ask them about the available for mineral. Go ahead and get that into them now. We'd like to get it into them at least six days prior to, uh, to your AI work, flushing those donors or, uh, or turning, turning bulls in. So that would be another thing that uh, we could offer as an additive package. And again, it works so well because it's a well-researched company. You get that from Zenpro, uh, which Karina likes working with because of their research program as well. But the other reason is it all goes back to the intake and, and why Brian's product works well in winning rain so well why the Avela 4 package works well in the Avela 4 mineral because they eat our mineral consistently and, and really that's the, that's the main thing. How long would we leave that in? Okay, so how long would we leave the Avela 4 in? So ideally we'd start at least six days prior to breeding season. Actually, if I, we could, I could back up, I, I'd suggest you put it in six days before calving. That's what's going to help get those cows um, through uterine involution and prepared to cycle sooner, but we would then leave it in through the breeding season. So honestly, if you have spring and fall season, you start doing that math in your head, buy one mineral and keep it out on a year-round mineral if you're interested in that breeding, breeder package. Yep. Similar question back over there to you, Brian, is uh, when should I put out that flight control? So these folks have been using the available four touch in some 3013s and really like those, but have a little bit of questions about placing that altitude out there. Within yeah, timing is really, really important. And I always like to tell people to start early and end late. Uh, we have what, what we've always called our 30-30 program, and that kind of gives you an idea or a rule to go by. And that's start 30 days before your last frost in the spring. Now, that could be different on, on any given year, probably by 15 or 30 days. But this area of the country, I always, I always like to joke about, that's probably around that's Valentine's Day. So get, get the girls out there in the pasture, Valentine's Day gift, and get them started on the fly control early. Um, because we want to get that manure treated early before the flies start hatching. Because once the temperatures start hitting 60, 65 during the day, as they have a few times now here, we're starting to see the flies start hopping and that's start building that population. So start it early, keep it consistent all summer until 30 days after the frost in the fall. And again, that's really important because that's really setting you up for your next year's fly control by staying in it long so we don't have a whole lot of overwintering. And um, I always have a lot of people tell me, first year I use your out, your out to sit, I see a difference in my fly control. It's the second, third year that I stayed on it long and the fall and started early that I really saw the biggest differences in my fly control. So staying on that program and trying to be uh, as religious, I guess, as you can on those on those dates starting early and then later help you out. So. I just always kind of make the comment, just like you said, from Valentine's Day till about spring break time. So we're, there's kind of where we need to be putting it out. Yeah, go. This year, 
Valentine's Day, they would have been thinking that we were crazy, yeah. Brian, if we really didn't, uh, you know, had talked about that. That was right. like a snowstorm and cold weather. And Very unusual. Very unusual. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll feed it till Thanksgiving, probably another day. Probably Absolutely. Probably a fair enough day. To Any issue with us feeding that year round by chance? There is not a problem with that. In fact, I always recommend anyone um, south of I 40 is, is a probably a pretty good candidate. If you were to do that 30 day plan, you stop at Thanksgiving, but then you're going to start in, in Valentine's Day. You've got December, January, and part. You've got about two and a half months. You don't need it. So it comes down to it's an inventory, you know, situation or call that you want to make on, on your own farm. So. Back to you, NT. We've got a question. Summer coming around the corner. We're going to get into some hot testing. I've read a little bit about, we've got some new mineral out called Summer Season 6. You want to hit a little bit about that tonight? Yeah, that's our uh, newest mineral we've uh, we've introduced at Purina. It's uh, called Summer Season 6. Um, and the 6 implies uh, the phosphorus level. So I told you uh, we want to stay within that 6 to 8% phosphorus level. So we went to the lower end of that uh, range to again encourage uh, as much consumption as possible. Then we added some other additives to that Summer Season 6 mineral. Um, when cows go through heat stress, and, and that's really what it is, we, we focus on the heat, but what I want to focus on is that stress part. Um, there are a lot of physiological changes that, that go on with you or I, quite honestly, if we're under heat stress, the same things happen to those cows. And so we see them not, not grazing as much or, or uh, losing weight. Um, we see them, uh, I mean, they're hard to work, right? They're, they're irritable like we are when, it, when we get hot. Uh, but there are some physiological changes that, that go along with that. Uh, nutrient uh, absorption is not quite as well uh, in the human health uh, sector. They, they, there's a term called uh, leaky gut, and, and that, that also applies to animals as well. So it's, it's in, in, in essence, uh, our gut lining where the absorption of nutrients occurs starts breaking down during heat stress and allows some toxins into the bloodstream, which creates inflammation. Um, and a whole immune system response. So, so really that uh, becomes a, a tremendous pull on energy for that cow. So now she's mounting an immune system response, response instead of making milk for that calf by her side. So uh, we've added a blend of uh, some prebiotics and probiotics, some things that, uh, some essential oils that, that really help mitigate that immune response to that cow that's under heat stress. Uh, you say, how do you know this stuff works? Uh, we know it works because we've tested these products in our feed yard business. And so uh, if you're familiar with the feed yard business, in summer times and heat stress, cattle dramatically go off feed when, uh, when, when temperatures uh, start making it uncomfortable for cattle <coughs> to uh, continue consuming feed. We've added this blend of, of as I mentioned, the prebiotics, probiotics, and essential oils in some feed yard diets, and have tested that through heat stress events and noticed that those feed yard cattle would remain on feed. And so we know they work in that segment. We've taken them to the cow calf segment. Uh, Christy's done a great job getting this uh, product positioned into this uh, local area. Has uh, some really, really good uh, customer testimonials of the product we used it last year. So we're excited to, uh, to also offer that this year. Part of heat stress is uh, uh, can also occur from uh, uh, biting flies. So, Brian, we made sure that we put alpha sit in that summer season six mineral as well, because that obviously that's part of the stress factor. Absolutely. Well. Perfect. Do it's kind of reaching that half an hour, right? So, uh, I think we don't have any questions at this time, but um, folks, what I'd like to do is, uh, I guess. No, we got a little bit of delay coming in from Facebook Live tonight. So if you guys got any final questions, if you don't mind to drop those in for us tonight, that'd be great. Brian, I appreciate you driving all the way down from Kansas City. Glad to be here. Thank you. And uh, it's been a pleasure. It's, right? fun. it's always fun. We were so we together here, what, about two weeks ago, we I do believe. Talk about right. more stuff. Right. And see, it's been a pleasure to have you out here in the field this week, kind of out visiting with the folks. And, seeing some folks around so folks you know that's one thing my name is chris keeler i'm the purina sales specialist that works with farmers cooperative and uh 
So if you guys have any questions or would like for myself or anybody within the Farmers Cooperative locations to come out and visit with you on your farm, please don't hesitate to reach out to our local area. And I'm going to step away for just a minute because there's only one of me and two other things that I need to get for you tonight. And Dr. Antti's helping me out tonight. So he's on it today. So Folks, here is my cell phone number. You guys can see that pretty good. And my contact number is 830-330-0902. If you guys have not ever fed any of our wind and rain or any of our Purina products, we do offer feed demos. If that is, you got some spring kit or some fall born kit that you guys can fix the wean up and you want to talk about maybe some free pond starter feed, something like that, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. And Ron, we've got out to sit sitting in here in this wind and rain and I always like going out and talking about fly control and we also offer some wind and rain mineral demos, right? So give us 90 days, give us your cows, for 90 days, let's put up some of this wind and rain. There's some things that we can do for you there as well. So also folks, um, if you would like to receive a $10 off coupon to bring back to any of your 15 farmers cooperative retail locations across Western Arkansas and in the Eastern Oklahoma, grab up that cell phone and in there, you're gonna type in a phone number of 57682. In the body of that, type in Karina. There will be a hyperlink. You'll go and select that. You'll have to enter in your email and a phone number. Trust me, I'm not going to call you guys unless you want me to. But then you'll select a Arkansas Farmers Cooperative Spring Mineral Meeting. So once again, I'm going to walk you back through those steps. The phone number that we're going to type Karina or text Karina to is 57682. Karina hyperlink, type in an email, a phone number, select A, Arkansas, and then Farmers Cooperative Spring Mineral Program, or Spring Mineral Meeting, I apologize. So, all right, so, so that's one way to get you a $10 off coupon. Sydney, you wanna come out here again one more time? I mean, you're, you're such a great lady. We love to see your bright, shiny face here. So, that gives you a ten dollar off coupon to bring by the store, right? Yes, ma'am. And they can use it either on that wind and rain. They can use it on that tub. Anything like that that they need, right? What else we got going on for them? Well, we do have a huge cooler that we are giving away, as long as they bring us the secret word. So, since we've got a special man here tonight that has a special day going on today, <laughs> what do you think? You think you need hit, you, that he should select that special word? He should. Absolutely. So, I guess that's probably going to put you on the spot tonight. Well, let's just uh, make it birthday. Birthday. Look at that guy. So, gentlemen, I guess I'm going to kind of make him a little red tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I guess. So, today is Dr. N.T. Cosby's birthday. So, we're going to make it special that secret word. If you can bring that birthday word into any of your 15 retail locations, and that will get you entered in to, for a 52 quart giggly tour. You've seen it? Yes, ma'am. It was on our marketing video. Right. Rodeo season's coming around the corner. It's going to be late season. So the spring working season, right? We're going to be working them cows pretty before too long. Weather's going to turn around. What a great way. So birthday is going to be our secret work. Anything else we've got going on? It's going to be late. It's going to end on what? April the 30th, right? Our spring We get a dollar off any normal bag of green and green. Like our window night all season in that red bag, you will get $1 off. You will get $1 off per bag. Or if you go go, you will get $2 off per bag. And don't forget, you can go, you can go gold. What a great way with that available for. You'll get your two dollars off, right? So swing on by the location, folks. We've got some great opportunities for you. We appreciate you guys joining us tonight, and we're getting every day closer to being able to get back to our normal meetings of face to face. So, folks, we hope you enjoyed it tonight, and thank you for your time. Thank you. You will get one dollar off per bag.